So one of the issues with STP, it blocks redundant links through our networks, but you'll notice every one of these links that has an orange light on it means that link is not actually in use. And that's what keeps our network from looping, right? So that's a good thing. On the other hand, that's unused bandwidth. So that's available capacity that is not being used because STP is blocking it. Well, this is where we can start using STP to kind of load balance and control some of our network traffic. Now, if you remember, STP elects a root bridge and most traffic flows through that root bridge. And in some of our previous videos, we've shown you how to track back the root bridge and how to set a root bridge. But spanning tree, STP can do that on a per VLAN basis. So let me come here to my distribution layer switch one. And I'm going to do a show VLAN brief. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because it's going to look better. So on our show VLAN brief, you'll see we have our default VLAN name. But then I've also created two other VLANs, client and guest. Okay, now what I can do when I go to set my VLAN, remember the way we set our priorities? Let's say we wanted to make this one, DL1, be our root bridge. And we did that on a per VLAN basis, and we showed this in a previous video. So we're going to go to config T, I'm going to go to spanning tree VLAN2, and I want to do the root primary. So root primary and that's going to make this thing my primary bridge my root bridge for vlan 2 but if i do a show spanning tree you're going to see now that we have multiple instances of it so let me scroll up here a little bit so spanning tree for vlan 1 has this as the root bridge and notice that's not me I have a different MAC address. That's for VLAN 1. For VLAN 2, this bridge is root. For VLAN 3, this bridge is not root. So what I need to do is I need to do that on a per VLAN basis. And I didn't mean to close that out, so I'll re open it here. So let me go to back to my config and I'm going to make this my root bridge for everything. So it's spanning tree VLAN 1 root primary. I already did VLAN 2 so I'm going to do spanning tree VLAN 3 root primary. And that will set me or should set me as the root bridge for all of them, all three VLANs. The default one which I can't change and then the two that I just created that I'm actually going to use. So I'm going to do a type do which remember do lets me run a privileged exec mode command from inside global config. So do show spanning tree. And there's a few other things that we can do uh, in um, Let me exit out of here. Show spanning tree. Whoops. Show spanning tree. That's going to give me my details. There we go. Um, I can do a show spanning tree summary real quick and just try to get a shorter version of this. So this is going to show me for my VLANs what states that we're in. But notice this doesn't show me uh, which route is bridge when I do the summary. So let's just take a look at a couple of these other spanning tree commands while we're here. Show spanning tree. So that was the summary. I can look at spanning tree for specific interfaces for inconsistent ports or for detail or active interfaces only or, and this is where we want to go to, I can look at it on a per VLAN basis. So let me show spanning tree for VLAN 1. And on VLAN 1, this bridge is root. Show spanning tree for VLAN 2, this bridge is root. Now if I don't do it for a specific VLAN, it's going to show me all of them. But then I'm going to end up scrolling through VLAN 1, this bridge is root. Go to my next page, VLAN 3, this bridge is root. Scroll up, VLAN 2, this bridge is root. So 
doing the show spanning tree for a specific VLAN can actually be really helpful because it lets you look at just one thing. And especially if you're doing a whole bunch of VLANs uh, and you're doing a separate instance of spanning tree for each one, which makes a lot of sense for reasons we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, it really helps to be able to look at just that particular VLAN instance. All right, so let's come back down here, and you'll see that this is now a root bridge for all of our VLANs, and so we've got all of these ports that are blocked. And so those ports aren't being used to carry any traffic. So from AL1 to DL1, we're going to cross this link for VLAN 1 traffic, VLAN 2 traffic, and VLAN 3 traffic. We're never going to use this link. Now, one of the things that we can do, though, because we have a separate instance of spanning tree for each one, we're going to ignore VLAN 1 because, you know, we're not going to use default VLAN most of the time anyway. What I want to do is I want to set all my traffic for VLAN 2 and 3 is flowing through this switch. I want to load balance so that all of my traffic for VLAN 2 is flowing through this switch, or most of it, but most of my traffic for VLAN 3 flows through this switch. And this is where this gets really beneficial because we can use spanning tree to send traffic different ways based on controlling root priorities to send traffic different ways. And by doing that, we can load balance across our switches and we can get usage out of these links that are currently shut down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to DL2 and I want to make this one the primary root switch or root bridge for VLAN 3. So I'm going to go to config T. Whoops, I'm going to go to privileged exec mode, then to config T. And I'm going to do spanning tree VLAN 3 root primary. And that will make this one the primary for VLAN 3. Now I also want this to be the backup for VLAN 2. So I'm going to do spanning tree VLAN 2 root secondary. And that'll make this my secondary one for VLAN 2. So now let's use one of those show commands that we were just playing with. Show spanning tree VLAN 2. Now for this one, this priority for VLAN 2 is 24 or 28, uh, 674, which is our base priority is root secondary plus a system ID but it's not the root the root has a lower priority and you'll see that right here okay um, so this is not root for VLAN 2 but it is the backup it's no longer the default 32,000 so what about and for VLAN 2 notice that we have a bunch of designated ports, a root port that links us to our root bridge, and then we've got a port that's blocking for VLAN 3, or VLAN 2, which is the one we're looking at. Now look at, let's look at spanning tree for VLAN 3. And for VLAN 3, this bridge is root, with a priority of 20,480, and notice all of these are designated ports. So we've got no ports that are blocking for VLAN 3. Now, this gets a little confusing because remember out here when we were looking at switches directly and if we're looking at a physical switch, we'll be able to see it's blocking state. if it's in a blocking state, it's going to be orange. Nothing is orange now. And that's because these links that were blocked for one VLAN are now in use for the second VLAN. So we're load balancing VLAN 2 traffic coming across here, VLAN 3 traffic coming across here, which means for a PC that's connected to AL1, if it sends traffic on VLAN 2, it's going to cross this link to DL1. If it sends traffic for VLAN 3, it's going to cross this link on DL2. So it allows us to load balance and uh, across our switches and utilize all of our connections including our redundant ones for um, for data communications. Now 
because this is the backup, this is primary for VLAN 3 and backup for VLAN 2, right? So if this one goes down, then this is going to become primary for both VLAN 2 and for VLAN 3. And so all traffic will cross those links, and we're going to lose our load balancing, but we're going to maintain that redundancy. All right, so that's a little bit of how and why we would set up per VLAN spanning trees using different bridges or different switches as the root bridge for different VLANs.